Hello, I'm Upstick. Welcome to episode 29 of Blockheads. Had to do a little bit of improv there because I don't have Optify and I can't do my zoom. Uh, it's about to turn night time, unfortunately. But uh, it's getting a little bit slideshowy around here at the main spawn town. I think it's all the particles. Uh, a bunch of different entities in the area just makes it a little bit slower. I think I'm running at like 40 to 45 frames per second in this area. <laughs> So, I haven't really shown much love to it, and it seems like projects have been kind of slowing down over here at the main town. I don't think anything new has been implemented. Uh, we've been really focusing a lot on farms lately, and yeah, I've been playing a lot with It's Mine. Well, to be honest, it's probably a good thing that we took a break from this town project, because these kind of projects can become quite tedious when it comes to just filling in an area, doing the right detailings, and maybe even doing areas outside of your constraints. So, like, this cliff line, to me, is like a big constraint, so you can kind of fill that in. You know where your boundaries are, uh, but when it comes to areas like up here, like the plains, uh, you kind of go back this way, you start seeing a lot of open space, and it becomes harder to build in those kind of areas because, you know, you can see a really large expanse around it. You know, if one area is left blank, then it doesn't really complement the build you have out there. Uh, that's like this project. It's a very beautiful project. Hex did a wonderful job with it, but I'm sure he feels the same way. Like, sometimes you can kind of struggle with space and, like, what to put around it. So, I think that's, you know, where this border kind of comes in. It kind of helps it out a bit. Uh, but I understand, you know, it's, it becomes tedious. And I'm just kind of glad that we're stepping away from it for a minute. But today, I was actually wanting to come back over here and do a little bit more work to the area. And I'm not really sure if I want to work in this mountain biome. I think that's what it is. Is, it, is that what it is? It's a mountain biome, right? Yeah, it's mountains. I don't know if I want to work in it. <laughs> because of the color scheme, I really want something kind of vibrant, bright to work with today. That's just what I'm in the mood for. Uh, but I do want to expand onto this like abandoned village project, uh, especially with the introduction of 1.16 textures where you have like basalt, blackstone. You can, you know, use that for your abandoned textures. Like we've got this, you know, all gritty, like burn up building, you know, you can definitely incorporate those elements uh, and really make it convincible. And so there's another area that I kind of left off of. I, I stopped decorating it. Uh, but if we go over here, kind of take a little dive. And look at this little farm area right next to our entrance into the town. Uh, I was going to do like a pumpkin and melon farm here, just like a more natural one. Um, but then I just kind of, I've kind of abandoned the project. <laughs> I stopped working on it. So I'd like to work on this area too. Uh, got this like little beautiful, uh, what is it? Like a nice relaxing area. Got like a little waterfall, a uh, little sitting area. Uh, this is a It's Mine suggestion before we got into Blockhead. So we built this on stream one night. And yeah, this enters into the berry farm, uh, which I really love this. Every time I come over here, I really like it. Uh, I think it could do with a little bit more texturing, but there's a lot of other stuff that you can incorporate to this area. And mainly it's just like farms and stuff like manual farms uh, with an aesthetic. And of course, there's this huge space that's not being utilized. I mean, we've got this whole island to work on. So definitely need to start doing a little bit of building over here more for myself. Uh, because I'm kind of in the mood for it. I've been doing a lot of building with the uh, redstone and farms and stuff. Uh, I want to kind of switch back for a little bit. <laughs> you know, just get a little break from it. And speaking of getting a break, these mobs <laughs> are everywhere out here. So I was wanting to see if Hex has worked on this any. I, I noticed that he'd done the front. Uh, did anything else incorporated into the home? Looks like he has. He has done a little bit there. Nice sitting range. Ooh, he's even done some... Uh, armor stand customization, so wow, very lifeful. A little pork chop on his stick. Hey, that's smart. Smart hex. <laughs> oh, I love it. So nifty. So alive. Uh, that's the thing about those armor stands, man. They they really bring life into your world. Uh, we've been having a little bit of issues with them, like being doing odd things. Uh, there's a guy with an eye patch. This is the mercenary guy. This is like <laughs> he's the rough gruff of the house. And, uh, yeah, here we go. We've got a little book reading, a little library section of the house. Uh, and I don't even think I've even seen the third tier, so... Is this where the decorating finally stops me? No, he has still <laughs> continued to decorate this thing. Beautiful. A uh, little armor stand, little dress area, tailor shop or something. Oh, okay, our little daycare. Smart, smart. Or even a kid's room. Uh, it looks more kind of like a uh, bunk for a daycare or something. 
and then continuing even further up. Jeez, is this like the fourth floor? Uh, looks like yeah, he's, he's still continuing to do decor. Uh, some some more bunks for the residents. And then on the other side, I would assume it's about the same thing. If he hasn't gotten to that yet, I don't think he has. Oh, this is just like some extra storage. Are you utilizing this? No, it's just some nice uh, barrel storage. And then I think this is like maybe the fifth floor, another entrance into even more storage. So he might actually utilize that. It looks like it's set to be utilized. Uh, it's going on up to the roof. Of course, roof access. So I would deem this the sixth floor. This is crazy. He needs an elevator in this place. Uh, very nifty. Uh, I, I've been wanting to see what he'd done with that project. Uh, very lifeful. Uh, I really like the pork chop on the stick. That's one of my favorites. So I'd like to really focus on a project like this. I'm into building at certain occasions, like certain days. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Do some kind of building somewhere. Maybe more on the natural side because that's, that's just the way I flow. So check this little trick out. Ah, uh, yeah, you see that? Ah, uh, some dynamic lighting. You know why? Because I've got Optifine back. Hey, smooth waffle. I uh, cannot play without it. Seems like it's a core mechanic for my gameplay now. And I wish there was an easier ways to do this. I mean, I could get a beacon going, but uh, I don't think I need that much basalt or blackstone to get my point across for the abandoned village project. I finally decided, hey, I want to do the abandoned village segment because it's much needed. I'm in the mood for it today. Uh, it's the next day. So yesterday I was really wanting some vibrant colors. And yeah, I kind of went back on that today. I'm feeling a little bit grim today. So, collect some of this and we'll see what we can do with it. I've got a lot of the other materials I had stored in the starter cave uh, just for helping me with the nature portion of things. Oh boy. <laughs> just about didn't make it. So I'm gonna get this region in and I'm hoping it's gonna save my stuff. Uh, I should probably dig a little tunnel just in case something happens here. Oh, oh. Yeah, I'm good, okay. Now, I could be one of those fancy YouTubers that outlines and plans and everything, but I'm more on the improv side. I've got some outlines to show you what I'm going for. Uh, but yeah, if we're just going to walk through here, I put in some of this basalt. Uh, I think it looks okay. Uh, stands out a bit in these, like, gray tone pathways. Um, and yeah, I need to incorporate it into some of the other stuff. So definitely want to go for this effect. I like this, like collapsed frame it looks cool well, it's got the frame still standing but then you got like the rest of it collapsed like the roof fell in and i wanted to do more of that maybe a little bit more defined uh, like if you looked at this to start with you probably couldn't tell i mean you have to look at it and kind of decipher what happened um but i noticed that this basalt looks really nice with the darker colors so we're going to mesh in a lot of those uh to make it fit right and so if we were to come over this way this is where i've kind of outlined things i began to um, these are like where my little abandoned houses are going to be for right now. I mean, this is only three I put up. Uh, obviously there's going to be some more, but yeah, I'm not going to go super far out here. And then obviously something right there where that scaffolding is. And I really want to play with space between the buildings because whenever I do my buildings, it's like, I like to cram pack them together. So like right here, a lot of cram pack stuff going on and it's kind of, it's kind of hard to see any spacing in between. There's really not any spacing. And if you were to put, you know, spacing in between these households, you could really tell a story. Like you could put in some really neat elements. I got a pathway kind of going out this way, uh, but I've got some ideas for in between the houses just to bring a story together as you're walking through, um, you know, what clues to what the residents were, uh, what kind of happened. And like my main story is going to be like they moved to this new village. Like if you remember from the previous episode where I worked on this part of the abandoned village, uh, they moved over to this new area where, like, a government kind of came in and, you know, put rule on them. And, like, the villagers wanted it initially, but then it kind of became a thing where they, you know, have a nostalgia for their old village and how things used to be. Yeah, kind of a deep story, you know, <laughs> just a lop over here. Uh, and then, obviously, we got the hermit, too, which I might incorporate some elements with him, too, because, you know, he's he's the last one. He, he hasn't conformed. He, he kind of stays in this area, though. You know, he has suffered from the abandoned village. Uh, I think it's kind of a cool thing. So I want to try to continue to speckle those elements into this build and just put like little lore bits and kind of how things occurred. So it's going to be a challenge, especially when you have things like this that you don't make much sense of until you really look at it. Uh, but I think I'll do a little bit more of a defined job with these houses. That way you could tell they were houses 
and to just kind of go from there. So it's been a few days, and yeah, I mean, I've tinkered away at the foundation a bit. Uh, nothing really that impressive up yet. Uh, I've got a little stone wall that I was working on, which is kind of cool. I uh, tried to make it like it was tattered and it's kind of falling apart. Um, we got a column kind of lay in here and maybe some other speckled bits to make it look more natural. Because when you look at an old place that's been burnt down, uh, you don't really notice a lot of the ashes or it's not really as black anymore from all the burning. It's more so like some speckled gray. Uh, now the houses might be a different story. They might be quite burnt, but anything that's wood, but like stone and stuff, it kind of fades over time. And so I'm not going to use a lot of it. Uh, but something I did notice would be kind of a cool technique outside of the pathway, including some basalt, just like vertically. So it kind of looks like a pile of debris or something. Uh, I'm going to keep working with it, going to keep tinkering with the environment building. That's the hard part is just like getting it to a point where it actually does look like it's an old burn up place, uh, with the blocks that we have to work with and meshing these colors in a way that doesn't conflict too much. Now in this time, this popped up this big noble house this huge noble house it came out of nowhere like last time it was recorded it wasn't there hex is a monster <laughs> he is so fast at these buildings and i absolutely love what he's done there i mean he's kind of made things kind of get you know not very symmetrical uh like a block off there and it just i think it looks better that way it's unique much more unique than like a lot of people try to go for symmetry. I do. I'm one of those people. Uh, as you can tell with this tower, if I would have maybe thrown some stuff off, it might have been look. Might have looked even cooler. I mean, this looks much more unique. And yeah, he's got a little campsite out here. Look at this. He's done this like within a few days. I know he has. Oh, that's glorious. That is glorious. Now I've never been inside. I don't think he's got. To, oh, has he got? He's gotten to some slight decor. You know, he, he's getting there. Man, I, I'm going to try my hand at one of these noble houses. I love the idea of incorporating these into your world. Uh, you can do them as many as many of those as you want to. Uh, do varying designs, and that's just, mmm. That's a fancy house. <laughs> that's huge. I uh, cannot wait to see what happens when we fill in this whole area, and we can just kind of browse it as a dedicated area. Maybe the, all the estates will end up being, like, in this area. And yeah, my abandoned village, uh, I keep looking at it like, is that a right spot for it? Because we're going to have all these estates. Uh, we'll have maybe some way of blocking it off. It's probably going to be smaller because I I've noticed that people have come by and done a little bit of tree farming in my area. So I don't know how far I'm going to go with it. Uh, might even just do like a few houses here and then be done with the abandoned village. As sad as it is to say, I don't know if it's going to work in the expanse of things with all these like really beautiful noble houses there. I might have gotten a little rowdy with this project today. I got a little addicted. Yeah, I, I jumped on two hours and just slammed a project out right here, right in front of me. Oh, look at that bad boy. Oh, look at this. Mmm. Fresh. Fresh tuna. Fresh tuna sandwiches. I hope you like them. Uh, I like the uh, toasty tuna sandwiches. And speaking of tuna, this is one slice of protein for our project. We got... This abandoned house, you know, it's kind of looming in the background. It's probably the only thing in this corner that looks pretty. And, you know, it doesn't look bad. And I put in some of the leaves. I, I tried to displace some of the blocks using cobblestone. I uh, might want to do a little bit more depth detail like slabs and stairs. Put a pergola in the front. You know, why not? Because the other medieval tavern did. This isn't really a medieval tavern, but, you know, it makes for a nice transition going into this area where we're going to be building more. And I tried my best to get this as detailed as possible going around. So that's my problem. I don't continue with my detailing and I leave it halfway done. And this one, I really just sucked it up and I was like, let's get it done. Let's get this outside done at least. Uh, we can worry about the inside where we can implement some story into the background. Oh, train. Ah, I don't know if you hear it. It's in my background, but uh, hey. I say job well done with the house and we got this smelled down house. Got burned up. Ugh. I could go for that like generic pillager raid storyline, but I think I would have stick with something darker. Like this side of the village got like mad about something and they came back and just burnt this place to a crisp. So at least some of the houses that were here anyways. I might want to implement some more burning attributes right here where these look like they've been burnt down. Uh, but as far as this new house, 
I think we're going in the right direction. We're heavily inspired by Hex over here. Been building these super huge estates. And I was like, you know what? I got to do something bigger too. After some contemplation, I have decided that this would be a nice like weapon master's shop or, you know, maybe like a sword shop, like a master craftsman. Uh, not necessarily a blacksmith. I mean, it's just, it seems a little generic. I, I kind of wanted to go that route. Uh, but, you know, like a big high quality building like this would be like a weapon master or someone who just like makes really high quality gear. So I thought it'd be kind of a neat thing. Uh, something I also wanted to do real quick was check and see uh, what rafters would look like up here. It's going to be kind of hard to implement. You might have to do some uh, separate columns. So I might do some columns right here. Go all the way to this opening up here. That's a really large opening, isn't it? <laughs> I might have to do some reworking to that. Uh, so if we can at least get right here, and then we'll bring these logs over like that, and then go across, I think that'd be the best bet. Uh, we might be able to take the eyes off of the top up here because this is ugly. <laughs> like whenever you see the ceiling, I uh, wish there's more pattern to it, but yeah, I just don't have it in me to really do anything up there. Maybe do one extra floor, but I don't want to go to the very top, make it like a three, four building. Uh, so I think that could work. We're going to have to extend these on the sides. I don't know what that's going to look like, so we might want to, well, on the outside it would probably wouldn't look that great. So we might have to do an extra columns on the inside to go along with. Okie doke. So I think that is going to really polish things off. Mmm, beautiful, beautiful. And I'd like to do some detailings in like these pockets. Uh, I want to leave this kind of like open. I really like the sunlight coming through there. I don't want to, you know, rafter to block that on the side. So I want to kind of stick with these ones in the center. So if we were to just, you know, pop a couple in, what would that look like? Ooh, let's put in some stairs, you know? Got to put the fancy stairs in there. Ah, yeah, now that's nice. Uh, I kind of like the openness up there too, but might want to include some other pattern up there to kind of block it off. Uh, you get, it's really kind of difficult to tell unless you get all of your columns in there. So let's go ahead and get those in there and see what they look like. And one support just isn't going to do it for me. So I'm going to do a couple of extra ones just to make it look nicer. Like all the detailing, it just, it just helps kind of put the story together, you know. Uh, it's not going to need a support on that side. So do one there. Just about done. This side it actually looks kind of crummy. I this being two blocks away from each other, uh, and those stairs connecting like that, it, it it's unfortunate, but it might actually work. We just continue plopping in because enough of it, it's going to generate enough noise where you're not going to realize it as much. Ooh, that actually looks okay. Uh, it's the nice support to it. I personally think so. Anyways, maybe if we had some trap doors there. Okay, I could deal. That looks pretty good. Yeah, you know, popped in some of the trap doors. Yeah, hey, that works, that works. So we got the foundation in place, and I think it's ready to decor, but I'm going to leave it as it is for now. Uh, definitely need some more distracting from the very top up there. It just it looks gritty, man. I, I mean, it just looks like slapped together. Uh, but I'm pretty proud of it. I, I think it looks awesome. At nighttime, it's going to be kind of hard to judge. Mmm, I think it came out looking pretty good. And I think that concludes this segment of the Manon Village. Unfortunately, I just kind of ran out of time, and not only that, I'm very wary about this, because I know Hex has been using this like little tree farm area uh, to do his projects over there, so I'm going to probably leave as is until we get everything figured out in the future. I think Hex has got some plans with like you know tree stuff, so we'll see what he's got up his sleeve. Ah, what do you say? But I think this could be about it for today's episode, guys. Hope you did enjoy watching. We'll see you next episode. Have a fantastic day.